Hello and welcome to Wild Owl TV. So I've now got a chance to do a video diary. So hey, we can have a little uh, catch up on what's been going on around the garden. So let me just uh, show you um, one of the things that um, is happening. We've got lots and lots of birds around the garden at the moment. Let's just zoom in here on the uh, the feeder. And uh, what do we got here? We've got long-tailed tits that are um, on the suet on the feeder. Oh, that's a blue tit there will look a bit but there's a little crowd of long-tailed tits of course long-tailed tits where you see one you always see more and they're loving the fat um, on the feeders and so um took me a long time to get some color in the garden but i'm pleased to say that now we have got color in the butterfly garden area we've got cosmos and there's some uh, fuchsia um, and um, some lobelia and uh, a little bit of lavender it is all a bit late um, but at least it's something oh and we've got a comma butterfly as i'm talking to you comma butterfly just flying around over the top of the garden there um okay let's have a look, look down i thought we could go and see if we can find some amphibians um so this is the hibernaculum area one of the hibernaculum see if there's anything under there nothing under here just uh wood lice and things like that nothing under there either but this area is brilliant for um, all sorts of things particularly uh, newts and frogs and toads because they can hide away um, you'll notice now we've got um, apples appearing uh, these are actually eating apples spartan and we've also got crab apples so they're going to be when they ripen they're going to be uh, eaten by the blackbirds let's have a look under this sheet um, because i suspect we're going to come across something here so I'm looking carefully. This is actually really um, a good place for a newts. Although today, doesn't look like we're in luck. Um, okay, so moving over to the nursery area. Well, what I've recently done is I've put a, I just noticed a butterfly, see so if catch up on them. I've put some fruit here. And the idea was to attract uh, butterflies, particularly red apples and that, but it really has been taken over by the um, the wasps and the flies. Um, but at night time, got a lot of moths uh, on there. Have a little look under one of the other corrugated sheets. Nobody under there either. Just a few spiders and things like that. So moving across here. So with a borage that I planted down here um, is actually now beginning to... Uh, to bud so we'll be getting some flowers with that soon and the nasturtiums um, here have been a little bit of a struggle they were planted late and um, i know that the slugs have been attacking them slugs and snails but i have been coming out on a night time and dealing with them uh, let's have a look in the cave here what have we got nobody in there at the moment and then moving across what have we got there? there's another butterfly beautiful time of year for butterfly Is that him there? Yeah. Really is. Fantastic. It's gone. <laughs> Another fantastic time of year for butterflies at the moment. I love butterflies. Right then. Now this is always a good piece of corrugated. Could have slow worms, could have frogs, could have newts. Oh, we got a mouse. Did you see? Oh, and we have a slow worm as well. So right here is our slow worm. I'm not going to try to pick him up. There's our slow worm. It really is amazing what you find under corrugated sheets. Just want to see the camera will just focus. There he is. They are just the most amazing reptiles. Look how this slow worm is just curled. If you didn't know any better, you'd think it was a snake. But it isn't a snake. <laughs> Off he goes. There he goes. Disappears. He just disappeared into the, uh, well, into the crevices that are here. There's, there's all sorts of crevices in this area. Um, so that's fantastic. That slow worm is regularly under this sheet. And it's just lovely to think that this corrugated sheet is a, is a refuge for them. And that is a male slow worm. 
um, and um, it is literally it's all through the year he's been in this area so it's obviously very safe for him likes it under there it's getting some sun on top of that sheet which warms it up so yeah fantastic that was a real treat look under the uh, the other sheet not expecting to find oh, not a lot of uh, wood lice under that sheet but this is in a similar area and this area is um, around by the waterfall now there's not a lot of water flowing here it is a very low volume pump so it's just enough to provide some water flowing down here and of course this is where the birds will wash themselves um, on an evening so that was a treat wasn't it now earlier on over the pond I did have a common data dragonfly um, flying around but um, can't see him at the moment so in terms of activity in the garden this so as i said in the recent video august is a strange time of year really the the birds are in molt which means their feathers are gradually falling out and they're getting new feathers um, you've got um, a lot more insects of course um, but the bee activity isn't what it was um, and it, it's just really um, a bit of a transition time um, uh, <coughs> everything is kind of pausing recovering from all of the effort in the breeding season and then what we're going to see then later in the year is another change we're going to change to some animals that are going to be hibernating some animals that are going to be migrating um, and some animals that are being, and particularly birds are going, to be, um, are going to be coming in to the country so we'll get some um, some extra uh, species coming in the garden like siskin um, and um, and things like that maybe see some black caps uh, so now what else can I can I just show you now we've got um, buddleia here I've got a number of buddleia um, plants in the uh, garden buddleia is one of those plants that you really cannot go wrong with if you want to start off with any wildlife plant in your garden get a buddleia um, you can even go to in South Gloucestershire particularly I say I get some focus here we go um, in South Gloucestershire the um, local quarries um, especially around here in Jim Sobri are full of Buddleia davidii which is that native uh, well I say native native to China but it's um it's the most common one and again as I speak we've got a butterfly coming through oh there we go that's just landed on the path what is that then is that a small tortoise shark yeah I think that's a small tortoise shell so that's the first time I've seen one of those this year off he goes again so that's nice to see okay so my wild flower area was very late in being <laughs> seeded but it is now coming through and uh, this is going to provide us um, with some um, extra insects and what have you and as you can see some of these flowers now um, are showing their buds and uh, as I've said before not great on flowers so one of my definitely my weaknesses but you can see there's a number of wildflower varieties here there are I mean we're going to see all sorts in this area when this is all out in flower and there's some lovely things here I'm sure some of you know exactly what they are really excited about that and um, forage is a herb but it's another one that's very popular um, with bee bees and what have you um, we have got um, Jackie's been <laughs> trying to rescue her caterpillars <laughs> they seem to be disappearing and um, whether it's the blue tits that have got them um, and uh, each time she comes over to try and find her caterpillars there's less and less of them so I don't really know I'm just looking for them now as we talk I don't oh what have we got there well, there's some eggs there we go let's just uh, zoom in on here so that's some eggs there well, she's spotted though she's got very very possessive about her nasturtiums so these are possibly small white um, butterfly eggs so that they're going to become caterpillars and we may have to we may have to do something about um, these these nasturtiums because uh, the the blue tits as I say do look out for them they spot caterpillars from a mile away and they'll come over and they'll eat them so maybe we're gonna to have to start put some netting over it or maybe move them into a into a netted enclosure just to give them a the caterpillars a chance to to evolve into what they should do which is of course is small white butterflies and large white butterflies as mentioned previously very little going on with these bees um, solitary bee habitats you know there's one cell filled there but really hoped I was going to have a lot more 
activity here but it it hasn't really been as good as I'd hoped. Um, in terms of the pond, the pond has been it's not really um, filtering. I need to probably get a second filter. So it's not as clear as I'd like it to be. Um, and actually, when I do uh, top it up from time to time, there is a little bit of uh, stagnation smell coming from it. So the nitrates in the pond must be very high. So I'm going to have to um, get some advice and um, see what I can do about um, reducing the nitrates. Now, what have we got here? Just having a look at the surface of the pond. Of course, this is a completely different type of wildlife again. Ah, we've got a pond skater. There you go. Isn't that amazing how they just stay on the surface of the water. When you have a wildlife garden, there's things to see in every corner. It really is. And we've got some new plants here now, uh, which are just beginning to flower and uh, that's adding a little bit of colour to the garden. So I'll finish this little video diary. Great to see a slow worm again. Little mouse under there as well. That's not the first time that mouse has been in that area so he's obviously a favourite place for that mouse to, uh, to sit out during the day and I'm just going to go off hunting now and uh, see if I can find anything else. So hope you enjoyed that. Just a little update from the Wild Owl Garden and I'll see you soon on Wild Owl TV. Bye for now.